sweetgeorgiapam.com is the website you go to. We got some free things on there we'll tell you about here in a little bit, but we have a guest today. Now, Pam is not always just on the podcast. She is everywhere. So Pam, I'm going to let you explain to people who are in the Atlanta area in particular where they can hear you. We have invited Walker of the Walker and Chloe Morning Show, 106.1 WNGC, Your Georgia Country. And they, Walker has called me a couple of times to be on the show with some wild dreams that have come up. So I thought we could invite him to be our first guest. Yay, Walker. Podcast. Thank you. You are our first interview. I'm so excited. And we were talking off air because for those who don't know, I used to do morning radio for a long time. So I appreciate the fact that he does not have bags under his eyes, not any deep, dark circles that I used to have. So I always give homage to those who do morning radio. So thank you for being on the show. Uh, you're very welcome. It's not the easiest schedule, but uh, <laughs> we have a lot of fun in here. And uh, it's always good when we can get sweet Georgia Pam on the on the show to talk about goofy dreams because uh, my co-host and I have had some doozies over the years. And Pam, I'm going to let you I'm going to let you have it. I just want to say that this just shows that dreams to me are universal because everybody is always curious about what's going on in their minds. Absolutely. It's doing dream work is the best party trick. You show up at a party and everybody's like, oh, I got one. I got one. I got one. But I was going to say, I bet getting up at three in the morning, you're <laughs> you're interrupting that sleep cycle. And so I bet that's that's part of the time when they come to you anyway. That is one thing that I've noticed is it's difficult to remember dreams more difficult than it used to be for me. And I think that is part of the problem is I'm getting interrupted often. And, and so I don't remember all the details, but I can usually remember kind of the overall theme of it. And these two dreams that I've had this week both Pam had this like sense of dread around it. Now, I know you've told me before that, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's something dreadful coming in the future. It's not a predictor of the future, but okay, I'll just go ahead and jump into it. The first one I had is a recurring anxiety dream that I have about working at Pizza Hut. Now, <laughs> I, for re reference, I haven't worked at Pizza Hut in like 30 years. But I often have dreams that I'm working there and that I have missed my shift or that um, I showed up late or forgot to come to work, whatever. And then things are always going terribly wrong in the kitchen. The, the pizza's coming out right and the deliveries aren't getting made on time and customers are angry. And this one, I have this dream often, but this one the other night actually had this kind of tinge of like something really bad was about to go down. And so I wondered if like people have these kind of uh, anxiety dreams. I'm, I'm guessing they do. Like you have dreams about high school or something that happened a long time ago. It's got to be pretty common. That part of it. Yeah, it's definitely common. And what I wrote down, because I love, I mean, nobody wants to go back to their first job, right? Nobody wants to go revisit. Amy Brooks Cinema. I mean, I took the tickets when you wanted to go see a movie, okay? And I made your popcorn and your Coke. So you're welcome, yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it may not be the first job, right? But it's for me, it's teaching in a, in a classroom. I was an elementary school teacher when I first got out of college. So what I'm thinking about, Walker, for this dream or for Pizza Hut dreams for you is that it is kind of those big life lessons. The first time you were faced with some uh, life lessons about maturity, Mm. And like, these are the things, this was the first time I experienced where I had to step in and be the adult in a situation in a work environment where uh, all the responsibility is on my shoulders. That makes a lot of sense because I was probably too young to have the amount of responsibility that I had at that store. So yeah, every time it comes up for me now, it's, it's like, I'm an adult, Yeah, but working there or I've gone back to work there because, you know, I needed to get a second job or, you know, times are tight or whatever. So I needed to go back to work there, but there's always big mistakes. Like I've sure. often had this dream where I forgot to go to work and, it, you know, the, the managers were very upset with me or something like that. Yeah. So there's sort of two things to do when you have an anxiety dream like that. So the first thing is to wake up and go, okay, so clearly there's some anxiety in my life right now that I'm not necessarily uh, aware of or facing or acknowledging. The first thing is like, okay, thanks, dreaming mind. Gotcha. 
But the second thing that you can do with that dream is to look at what's, you know, what's the commentary being made now. So the first thing is, how does it relate to waking life now? And the second is, what's the commentary that's being made by the details of the dream? What you said about this one is that there's some, like a little bit of what I heard was like a darker, sinister energy to it. Like there's something bigger getting ready to happen in the dream. It sounds like that's where, that's where it differed from the other dreams that you've had. Right. Okay. So this kind of plays right into my second dream that I had uh, just a couple of nights later where I was hanging out with Shaquille O'Neal. There's a fun start, right? But in this case, it was like not fun loving, like, you know, guy on TV, Shaq. It was uh, Shaquille O'Neal in the sense of like, uh, he was kind of a, a dangerous person. So he or whoever, you know, whatever represented him in the dream had a gun, And not that the person was going to necessarily murder someone, but they had it and they had it in like a public place. And I kept thinking to myself, like, should I do something about this? Should I say something about this? And I debated it in the dream back and forth. And I ended up saying something about it. And uh, and then (laughs) Shaquille O'Neal in the dream or whoever this person was got in trouble for having a firearm in a public uh, place, which I didn't necessarily want the person to be in trouble, but I didn't, I was conflicted of, you know, how dangerous is this? How important is this? So again, this theme of something very sinister is about to happen or could happen if I don't act. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's a couple of things for me that come to mind when you're talking about the dream. The first is just addressing your own, what you're sharing, which is, is something going to happen in the future that I, that this dream is trying to warn me about? Is this a warning dream? The way that it feels like to me is that the the unconscious mind is it's got something building in it, right? It's got some sort of pressure building in the unconscious. You, your psyche has some pressure building in the unconscious. So that pressure that's building, the worry, the concern, the dread, the whatever, is building in and showing up in your two dreams as this ever-present potential threat or danger. Our logical mind is the first thing that comes on board when we wake up. And so your logical mind goes, there's a danger out there. But the fact that it's showing up repetitively is to me more suggesting like there's a danger in here. Mm. There's something in here that's building that feels really dark. So this is, this seems unrelated, but I have a point to make about it. Sometimes when I'm not saying this is true for you or your childhood, Walker, but sometimes as a child, when we face or experience something that we don't have the capability to understand because we're children at that point. So a big concern or a big life shift, life shift or something really scary happens. And as a child, we don't know how to wrap our brain around it. We don't have the words to express what we feel. Those experiences in childhood can sometimes show up in your adult dreams as an unknown force because in childhood we had something that we couldn't comprehend and it got lodged in the psyche as something we can't reckon with something we can't identify it's some big unknown force right so if in a dream like a dark shadow shows up or smoke comes in the room or i felt a presence sometimes that sometimes that is actually relating back to something from childhood that's playing a role right now. Okay. I I can tell, I'll share this with you guys. I have been seeing a therapist recently, um, but just because we've had some kind of traumatic stuff happen in our lives in the past five to six years. And I did have kind of a a problematic, traumatic childhood. And it was something, it is something that I've worked on a lot over the years. And I saw a therapist years ago and we worked through a lot of that stuff. And so I'm I'm not really having any uh, issues with it anymore. But I wonder if just (laughs) having uh, been seeing this therapist for the last three or four weeks, maybe has unlocked some of those memories and maybe it's just showing up uh in my dreams yeah like it's just a pressure valve release and i'm sorry i'm sorry to jump in pam i just wanted to say that you know walker we always say on the show how dreams really can help you heal yourself like it's a communication with your own 
psyche, your own body. I mean, there's so many examples of what the messages mean. And so I just think that that is, to me, here's another example of the fact that if you pay attention to your dreams and have a relationship with them, it, it helps in the healing process. Sinister feeling maybe uh, is not necessarily something that's going to happen, but maybe something that, that has happened that just, you know, uh, kind of popped up again in, in my mind for some reason. Yes. And the, the, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Dreams. I got it. Thank you. There's something processing. There's something going on can help with that dream, not haunting you for the rest of the week of like, I don't know. What do I, what am I? Sure. It's working on your behalf, right? It's helping you move towards. I've talked about this towards spiritual and emotional well-being. So this is a pressure valve release. This is a, an opportunity to like, just get a little bit of that balance back, right? It was building under the surface. So we let out a little couple of dreams that express that fear. Walker, do you feel better? I do, but I, I didn't mean to go uh, serious on you, but uh, this was a lot more interesting than the uh, dream I had one time where I was playing football in a grocery store. I remember Pam had fun with that one. Yeah. <laughs> I really literally never know what's going to come out of your mouth when I hop on those spots. I'm like, okay, here we go. I don't know who's showing up. Well, first of all, well, I mean, I think vulnerability is the best path to healing, right? You know, this is a perfect segue into you letting us know about your show, where people can find it. And, you know, the fact that Pam is on your show regularly to talk about this stuff. So thank you for that. Uh, Chloe and I are on 1061 WNGC, which is your Georgia country. Uh, we're based out of Athens, Georgia, but you can hear us in Atlanta. You can hear us all over North Georgia. Um, and we're on five to nine every weekday morning. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Tell Chloe I said hello. And uh, if you want to be a part of Pam's experience and maybe get a one-on-one -on -one with Pam, just go to sweetgeorgiapam.com. And also there she has a free downloadable guide called Six Nights to Better Dream Recall. So Walker, if you ever get to the point because you get up at 3.30 in the morning, you need to get some help with that, then you know where to go. You know Pam personally, though, so I guess you don't have to do that. But everybody <laughs> else kid, again, sweetgeorgiapam.com is the website. And then if you're on social media, you can just DM her uh, at Sweet Georgia Pam. So Walker, again, thank you so much. And Pam, thank you. Thank you. That was great. I love it. Come on again.